G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here from the Byron Bay Observatory. In the last video, someone dared me not to cut my hair until Easter. Sucker. I'm really lazy and I love beer. It's the easiest case of beer I'll ever earn. Biddy, down. I'm on holiday, it's Christmas. I hope you guys are filled with the Christmas spirit. I know I have been. Of course, there's a Christmas comet, which is a miracle, especially since there's a movie about a comet heading towards Earth, released at the exact same time. I don't know how they organized these things to come out in parallel, but somehow they pulled it off. Congratulations, well done. And given I can't actually see the comet from my observatory, a huge irony, and the weather has been shocking, uh, today, something different. I'm on holidays, I'm going to visit the Crystal Castle in Mullumbimby. But the good news is the owner of the Crystal Castle, Naren King, reached out to me earlier in the year because because he was gathering a collection of meteorites. And of course, meteorites is something that is right up my alley. Midi. So join me as we head out to the Crystal Castle and learn a bit more about meteorites, the world of meteorites, and the wonderful process of swapping your hard-earned money for a magical piece of rock. It's the greatest trick that the devil ever pulled. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, and you're watching Star Stuff. We made the scenic and exhilarating drive to the Crystal Castle, which is in the hinterland near Byron Bay. The Crystal Castle, unfortunately, isn't literally a castle made of crystal. In fact, it's not even a castle, but it is home to some of the biggest crystals imported from all over the world, and is a mecca for hippie tourists and people who think rocks can help with period pain. But the question is, why am I here at somewhere so alternative? I'm a man of science. I don't believe in all of this guff about crystals and spirituality. There are things about crystals which are important, like quartz has a frequency that's predictable that we can use for electronics and computers and all sorts. And that, to me, is magical. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic, and that is magic. I don't think it's going to help your period pain, though. But if a rock's come from out of space, I do like that sort of thing. And even though there's nothing intrinsically powerful or special about that rock, it's just an element, like iron. I still think it's pretty cool. I have to confess though, I do like coming here. I like rocks and geology and even though I don't believe in karma and the afterlife, gods and the fashionably Buddhist aesthetic that permeates the gardens, I do enjoy minimalism and peaceful serenity. This place has a lot of that. They even have site-wide Wi-Fi internet which resolved the painful agitation I experienced when I realised my phone had no signal out there. And then once the group meditation in the geodesic dome finished, it was time to go through to see the meteorites. The main reason I was here. I was not disappointed. The owner, Naren King, had been quietly obsessing over space rocks for a while now and had invited me personally to come and see the collection he'd amassed. Here I was, Mr. Know-it-all atheist with opinions about people buying rocks for completely unproven healing properties, suddenly presented with a huge selection of meteorites for sale. I thought this was going to be an exhibit. I had no idea I'd come face to face with my own consumer futility. This was a trap. I'm not going home without a meteorite. Did Narim even know this when he invited me? Was this his plan all along? I quickly checked my bank balance and began to narrow my field of attention to the meteorite I was going to take home. I'm here with Naren King. Did I pronounce that correctly? You Naren? did. Oh, good. <laughs> hey, thanks for inviting me. We're here at the Crystal Castle and I've just come from the uh, meteorite exhibit here, which is new. Uh, this is really just opened a few days ago, right? Yep, a few days ago. And uh, he's already scammed me out of $650. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> on, on rocks. We did. Tell us what you got here. This is what's called a Allende meteorite, which is one okay. of the most studied meteorites in history. I think there's 14,000 research papers written on it because wow. it's a carbonaceous chondrite. Yep. You would know more about the science. A little. But they're looking back to the early early time of the formation of the solar system and studying this meteorite mm. in depth all those years. Um, 
This is my latest favorite one because... Oh, look at the char on that. Because the char, the black fusion crust, yeah. is because that's a fresh fall. And on the 6th of November, which as we know is about six weeks ago, yep. this was not on Earth. Wow. That the fresh. morning of the 6th of the November, this was in space. Oh, hold so that up closer I, to the lens so I we can just, see that one. That, that was out there just a few weeks ago. At 1 p.m. a fireball came over a desert region in northwest Africa, in Mauritania. <laughs> and a lot of the locals and nomads saw it and went out looking and this is one of a couple that I've got. That's brilliant. So that's fresh from space. So that's just, really, you are down I, the rabbit hole. I think that's great. Like, that's yeah, really fresh, that's fresh, fresh falls. falls. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Unbelievable. <laughs> and so yeah. what, how did this happen? You going from, yeah, you know, obviously crystals, very mm. geological mm. Uh, and you've, you've suddenly got a keen interest in meteorites. Where did that happen? I think it's about, it's just, for me, it's about awe. What creates awe for human beings and for me that's been crystals the beauty yeah. and magic of crystals for so long you know uh -huh. and now yes i've left earth and how can you say there's no awe in mm. space and it's just there you know no one has to be convinced of it so what really interests me about um, meteorites that we can see very clearly as opposed to the rocks that we get on Earth is you have the two types, the stony meteorites and the iron meteorites. And we know here on Earth that, uh, or anywhere really, as things are heavier, they sink down to the bottom, which is why we have iron in the middle of the planet. And because the planet's so big, the, the density crushes it and it turns to magma and it's just molten iron at the bottom. Uh, so what we see when we see these meteorites flying through space, they're actually planets, and they're called minor planets when they're whizzing around as asteroids. And so what we see with the iron, they are literally the core, what used to be the liquid magma core of a small planet that was whizzing around in space and has since broken up and, and we get it. When we have the, the stony stuff, that's the mantle of that planet. So the iron is the core of the planet and the stony stuff is the mantle and the crust around that iron core. Do you know this, did you read this sign here? This belonged to Neil Armstrong, this album? Oh, and did it really? Yes, it did. Well, I really like this, um, this palace idea. Do you want to take it out? Do you want to take it out? I'd love to look at Let's it Let's take it out. I mean, is that, that is eye-catching, is isn't it? Isn't it? You can see the olivine transparent. Uh, so we we're talking about the iron on other planets. You know, obviously there's a lot of iron in here, but mixed in with the high pressure gemstones, literally gemstones from space. And you've got heaps here. You've got Chebelinsk, which is a very recent fall in itself. That is, that's the one that um, I think damaged about 1700 buildings. Ah! Yeah. One of the biggest falls in the century. And of course they're worth yeah. more when they're yeah. documented like that. That's right. When they're on video. Yep. Did you see the coin? No. So this is a 1,700 year old Roman coin with an emperor on it, made out of a meteorite. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so in, in the ancient times, uh, yeah. before, before real metalworking kicked in, iron was found, it was a found object. And so we have like Egyptian pharaohs yeah. with iron daggers and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, when, when they could, find this stuff flying through space, they were like, wow, this is a, a really great metal to work with. So this iron is Campo di Tiello, Argentina, apparently fell to earth 5,000 years ago. That um, is a thick boy. And that doesn't look that big, but it is heavy. <laughs> Weighs iron more, is heavy. Than, more than 32 kilos. Yeah. And 32 kilos. Yep, we have an even bigger one arriving <laughs> cool. very soon. Well, it was time to go, and the crystal vibes were really kicking in. I felt lighter, about $650 lighter. It was time to go back home and enjoy my new rock. Just look at that. Look at this thick boy. I can't believe I own something like this. Such a large stony meteorite. Uh, now, probably the first thing I should have done when I was there I uh, was actually test these with a magnet. Here's an iron. This is definitely magnetic, no question about that. 
beautiful little sample. These are about 10 bucks. 10 bucks for a piece of space. Pretty cool, right? Nothing like these other samples though. This guy responds perfectly to a magnet. Stony as well, doesn't look like metal. Looks just like a rock, but uh, clearly responds to a magnet. Same with this guy. Now this one, the big fella, gosh, I'd be really disappointed if this didn't respond. That would definitely mean I'd been scammed, but it does. It's definitely a lighter response than the others, uh, but that's because the iron nickel composition is just slightly different. Not as much iron, but it's definitely in there. All in all, a pretty good compensation for not being able to see the Christmas comet. Being able to get a piece of something from space all of my own, and especially such a large, beautiful piece like this one. That's it. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you've been watching Star Stuff. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.